All right. That was really awesome, Kenny. Those visualizations just blow me away every time I see them. And uh, I'll be showing some imagery in this presentation as well, but maybe not to the extent that Kenny uh, just did. But we were both uh, interns working with open topography. And um, I'm going to go through a, pres a, a presentation on some of the work that I did this summer on uh, enhancing access and usability to um, a data set called the 3D Elevation uh, Program, which is a USGS uh, managed data set and uh, using something called Jupyter Notebooks, which I'm gonna explain a little bit more in just a second. And just a little bit about uh, who I am. I'm a, I'm a PhD student as well at UT Austin um, in the Department of Geological Sciences. And my research uses a number of different methods, uh, remote sensing data sets like LIDAR and satellite imagery to basically understand how uh, modern surface processes work on, on Earth and how these relate to um, the processes that acted and were and basically formed the ancient rock record that we that we can interpret um, in the field. This is a, an, a Cretaceous fluvial channel belt uh, exhumed out in eastern Utah. And so um, my research hope uh, tries to tie together what modern processes are reflected in the in the ancient record. And so uh, this summer specifically, I'm working with open topography to develop Python workflows for uh, more easily accessing, processing, and visualizing these LiDAR data sets. And so um, I'll just go a little bit into a little, a little detail on LIDAR data for those who haven't heard the term before. Um, so LIDAR is an acronym which um, is, uh, stands for light detection and ranging. And so it's a method that basically uses laser pulses emitted from a, uh, a sensor, emitted from a source um, fixed oftentimes to a, an airplane, or also they can be fixed to satellites. And it measures the time of travel from the, sen uh, the source to the sensor back at the uh, the instrument, and basically uses that information to back out the uh, the distance it is from the Earth at a, in a very precise way, and you can use these data to um, basically look at the the Earth's surface and also structures and vegetation things like that across the Earth's surface. So um, the data that are you know collected are are they're collectively called a point cloud, which are basically a collection of x, y, and z locations. And these can be used to make 3D representations of, um, of the landscape or other features um, that are observed by the, the tool. And so these data can then be uh, gridded to make things like digital terrain models, uh, like Kenny showed a few of in his presentation, and also uh, what are called digital surface models, which are essentially the representation of the landscape as well as the vegetation and other constructed features across it. So, the down here at the bottom are examples of what the point cloud would look like. These are actually uh, just a very high density of points, so much that you can't even see through the point cloud at this scale. Uh, this is probably on the order of tens to hundreds of millions of points within this one uh, image here. And then you can uh, create a gridded surface from those points, um, which would be representative of the surface beneath vegetation if you use um, a certain classification of points or the surface including vegetation and other structures, which we call a digital surface model. And so um, uh, and just to add on to what Kenny discussed with open topography, um, it's an NSF funded project and a collaboration between UNAVCO, the San Diego Supercomputer Center and University of Arizona. And so a unique thing about open topography is that um, they have access to high compute infrastructure at the San Diego Super, Supercomputer and also quite a few uh, software tools for data processing and visualization that are all in house. And so from the from the website, uh, Open Topography's kind of mantra is to facilitate the community access to high resolution earth science oriented topo topography data and related tools and resources. So in this vein, um, one of the primary goals is to basically make LIDAR data and uh, data processing and visualization tools more uh, easily accessible and effective um, for users in the earth science community and other applications as well. And so um, this particular project is a collaboration with USGS and it was funded through uh, something called the Community for Data Integration, and is essentially um, an, a project focusing on a further enhancing accessibility and use of uh, data that's collected as part of this program called the 3D Elevation Program. And so this is a kind of a map showing the extent of data that are part of this program. Um, it's a program managed and maintained by the USGS and uh, with the, the goal of acquiring high resolution uh, topographic data over a fairly short period of time. So we can uh, understand things like uh, how the landscape and vegetation are changing and uh, general trends in, in landscape uh, across the US at very high resolutions uh, spatially. 
And so it's a, it's, the goal is for it to be nationwide um, when, when it's finally completed. And uh, right now, there's about 42 trillion points that are um, across, the, across this image right here. Um, so quite a bit of data uh, covering six and a half million square kilometers. And the acquisition of this is still ongoing. And there's by now, there's probably actually more um, data acquired that isn't shown on this map just yet. And so um, it's a significant volume of data uh, on the order of 20 terabytes or so. And um, it's stored in the cloud on an, in an Amazon Web Services S3 public bucket, which you can access with an API. So um, that's something that's recently been uh, pushed for by the USGS to make these data more accessible. And, um, and while you can get data directly from places like Open Topography or the USGS, um, there's not very many workflows developed for programmatically accessing these data or um, basically using your own computer to um, access this data using the API, where if you want to get a much larger area or do some specific types of processing on that data, there's not really any systematic workflows uh, in place that you can use um, kind of on your own local infrastructure. And so um, the goal of this project is to, to use the existing cloud infrastructure that's in place with 3 up data and create easy to use uh, Python workflows for accessing and using uh, this data to make derivative products that can be used for people within the earth science community and, and, and outside of that as well. And um, the idea is th these will be easy to use and um, be reproducible tools that can be also used for education. And so Jupyter Notebooks are the way that these are implemented. This is a, a web-based, basically web-based interactive computing platform that is a combination of code, documentation, and uh, visualizations all within the same uh, document. And so this on the left shows kind of what a notebook would look like. This, this is a, a code cell, and then you have markdown for documentation. So you can go through these and learn about what the code is actually doing while you're actually producing the deliverable uh, products at the end of uh, the code execution. And so uh, within there, you can look at the at maps, you can look at where the data exists, and you can do things like estimating the number of points within um, within a given area of interest. And so these uh, the goal is to develop these Jupyter notebooks. There'll be multiple of them um, to, tailored to kind of specific use cases that people that study surface processes and other things can use. And so the, the workflow is basically designed within each notebook. This is kind of the general way that we access the data is you have an interactive map within the notebook itself, and you can draw an area of interest anywhere where, the, where there's 3 depth data uh, available. So this is out on the island of uh, Oahu, and this is a volcano called Diamond Head. Um, and you basically make a call to the AWS bucket within the notebook. You can estimate the number of points that are within that area and specify the amount of points that you would like to have returned to you uh, to get the desired spatial resolution. And then we've uh, built in a couple of uh, processing stages uh, that, that leverage a couple of open source libraries in Python, which um, allow for filtering, reclassification, uh, reprojection, and other uh, manipulation of the data, as well as creating those DTMs and DSMs uh, that we've seen today. And so the, the result is basically we have a way of getting point cloud data and DTM data uh, directly saved to your to your local computer um, through this, these Jupyter notebooks. And there's a series of them with specific um, earth science use cases. And ultimately, they can be used as educational tools as well, ideally. And so um, the USGS is part of this project. And so several of the workflows have been tailored to um, the needs of the USGS. So if you've heard of the seven and a half minute quad, uh, quadrangles, these are um, basically uh, uniform measurements of, of land area across the US that the USGS uses to catalog the geology and the landscape. And so you can actually uh, access the USGS web map services for the um, quadrangles and get the data corresponding uh, to that location. And another um, USGS specific one is uh, the USGS has these footprints which outline the watershed boundaries kind of across the US. And we can use the, those boundaries directly uh, within these notebooks to produce derivative products like DTMs to look at um, how watersheds are actually draining to the, to the, um, the rivers in this case near Washington, DC. And uh, we have another, a, a number of other uses with these notebooks including canopy height models. I think uh, Kenny touched on them in his presentation, but uh, basically you can difference the 
digital elevation or the digital terrain model and the digital surface model and get the get an idea of the height of the tree canopy and forest structure using um, using combination of these tools. And so we have notebooks generated specifically for that purpose. And also um, when you have co-located three depth data like these this area, this is called Wax Lake Delta uh, near kind of the Mississippi River Delta. Here's two three depth data sets that are co-located. So one's from 2011, one's from 2013. Basically differencing the DTMs shows you how this landscape, the landscape has changed over that period of time. So um, the final uh, what I'll, I'll discuss is we have a, a, a workflow for now taking um, high resolution imagery and actually colorizing 3 depth LIDAR points by that imagery. So this is imagery from the National Agriculture and Imagery Program. Uh, it's one meter per pixel resolution. And basically you take the RGB values and can color the, the points by that uh, information. So this is a, a region just over a portion of Boulder with the flat irons there off in the, in the distance. So kind of cool for visualization purposes. And so the way that we see the, the deployment and use of these is through a combination of GitHub and uh, something called Google Collaboratory. So all of the, the notebooks are hosted on GitHub and can be downloaded uh, to your computer and used there locally. But we also have built in the, the functionality to use something uh, that's Google, Google hosted uh, cloud platform for uh, running the, the notebooks on their, their side, which has oftentimes better uh, hardware available. and um, and doesn't require a lot of complicated in local installations on your own computer. So these are accessible uh, already and you can kind of start testing them out either on your local computer or on Google's infrastructure. And so kind of getting towards the end here, um, the way that this, the next kind of direction that this work seem, uh, will probably take is um, there's a another organization within the USGS that would like to get three depth data at locations corresponding to river corridors and major uh, infrastructure like highways and utilities and so forth. And so these notebooks will probably be tailored to uh, fit that specific need as well um, when, when the time comes with that project. And so to summarize uh, this summer, we've developed a few seven, uh, seven Jupyter notebooks, which allow interactive um, access and processing of three depth data um, across the US. And they're designed to work for people uh, who don't have a, a lot of background in Python programming, and they can also be used to learn more about how Python can be used for high resolution uh, topography like this. And there's uh, specific workflows geared towards USGS applications and also kind of the broader geospatial community that can be run either locally or on uh, in the cloud with Google Collaboratory. And so um, that's, uh, I think that's all I'd like to say about that. And I appreciate your, your attention and also, uh, UNAVCO and Open Topography for allowing me to, to learn a lot this summer and my fellow interns as well for uh, just allowing me to interact and, and kind of get a, get a grasp on what, um, what it's like to work with you guys. So with that, I'll take any questions that you might have. Thanks for your attention. Thanks, that was great. So the floor is now open for questions. Oh yeah, someone made a great comment. It, it isn't. Python is intimidating to people who do not know how to talk in Python. Um, making it more accessible is definitely beneficial to all of us. Agreed. Yeah, it's um, the the beauty of the Jupyter notebook is that they they can be kind of. I think you you can almost have zero experience really with Python, and and you can actually learn a lot about how it how it's working if there if there's the right amount of documentation, kind of. Uh, corresponding with with the notebook, so that's that's one of the big goals with this work. I think is to uh, to basically since it's such a large amount of data, you know, it's it's cost hundreds of millions of dollars to acquire it actually over the years, if not more. And um, and you know, there's always more applications that we can seek to use with this data. And so um, making it as accessible as possible is a is a major uh, motivator for this work. Yeah, that's great. 